Uh, McGregor Mayweather, we talk about this every week. The update this week comes from Steven Espinoza, who's the executive vi- vice president of Showtime Sports. Um, obviously, relationship there is with Floyd Mayweather. They would be involved in this potential fight. Um, he gave some quotes here, and I want to I want to pull this up and make sure I'm attributing them to the correct uh, source. He was speaking to Chris Mannix, um, longtime boxing guy, and what Espinoza says is that. The negotiations are largely at a standstill. There hasn't been a ton of progress. And I think if they, speaking about the UFC, don't move relatively quickly, people may move on. People may tire of it. But it really is something that needs to happen this year or it probably won't happen. Floyd's on 18 months, two solid years come September since he's fought. He's still in great shape, but at a certain point, he's not going to want to do it after a while. Um I think it goes on to even kind of question how much the UFC really wants to make the fight. I think part of the fear on the UFC's side is that they'll never see Conor again. If he makes 50, 60, 70 million, and then you never see him in the ring, and he retires in Ireland, and so much for their megastar. Um, Sandu, I ask my co-hosts every week how much stock they're putting into this Conor McGregor, Floyd Mayweather update. This one seems like one that we should pay attention to. What do you, what do you make of this? Yeah, I'm not too familiar with kind of the North American or specifically the U.S. Um, broadcast rights and deals situations. But, like, I mean, maybe you can kind of, you know, I suppose, comment on this. When it comes to the UFC and who their pay-per-view partners are, how would that affect the relationship that perhaps um, Mayweather has with Showtime, like I'm, I'm assuming, I'm assuming Stephen Espinosa is coming from that angle in terms of the distribution and the broadcast rights for this particular fight. Um, aside from that, there are a few things that I do agree with him there that I do think that they need to make this fight if it's going to happen very, very soon. I, I do think it needs to happen within this year because otherwise there will be just be too much pressure on the UFC allowing McGregor to hold that UFC lightweight championship, but also Mayweather is ticking on an age as well. Well, I completely agree with that. I I don't think he's right in saying that people will tire of it. I, I mean, I think no. we saw we saw that with Mayweather Pacquiao. You could drag this thing on six years. People will still be interested in, in this for s- some reason. But uh, as far as you know, how it all looks between the relationship of, of selling pay per views with Showtime and the UFC, look, that's that's what needs to be discussed, right? Uh, Floyd Mayweather is is in a partnership with Showtime. Conor McGregor is under contract with the UFC. That's what we always wondered: is that what what is the UFC getting out of this? Are they getting a flat fee? Um, does this fight count as 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 part of of Conor McGregor's contract with the UFC? Is it promoted by the UFC? Is it co pro promotion? Is it promoted by Mayweather Promotions, his own company, and then um, produced by Showtime Sports and UFC? Kind of essentially sits it out or do they do they get their marketing behind it i believe that usc would want some hand of course in the promotion of this thing i mean history suggests that they will be bullying on that um you know you go back to his uh his statement um does it need to happen this year or probably won't happen I don't know if I'd be willing to go so far as to say i completely 100 percent believe that but i do think that there is pressure on every side really every side, more so on Connor and the UFC to not be wasting his time, not have him sit out in the prime of his career when his markability is at his absolute peak, most likely, um, that he's just sitting out for no reason as to waiting for a fight that never happens. So I do ag- agree with that part of it. What I would ask you, Sandu, is do you think that there's any even shred of truth that maybe the UFC is not as motivated to put this fight together as Dana White has, has suggested, that maybe they're saying they are, but secretly they they don't mind if these negotiations fall through? Uh, I think so, because like you said, if if McGregor you know gets this boxing match with Mayweather and he clears 50, 60, up, upwards to 100 million, I, I fear, like many others, that he will just walk away from combat sports in general. Why, why would he, how can he come back from that big payday to 10, 15, 20 million, whatever the case is, with the UFC? You know, and I've spoken about this with some colleagues here in the UK. You know, McGregor has always said that his plan is to get in, get rich, and get out. Um, and, you know, he's seen the, the ugliest part of this sport. He's seen, you know, deaths happen, you know, due to uh, combat sports, specifically MMA in Ireland, you know. He's already yeah. accomplished what he set out to accomplish in terms of being a two-weight champion. Why would he? Why would anyone, you know, um, after a big page like this, 
want to fight anymore. You know, he's already marketable in so many other areas. He's already got a businesses set up in so many other areas. Um, the only reason for him to continue to fight wouldn't really be um, because of money. It would probably just be due to any competitive spirit and um, accomplishments that he has set himself. But like, like I said before, he's already done what he set out to do. So what more is there for him to do? It is interesting to think about it from the UFC side because Dana White changed his tune on this very quickly. You know, basically saying that it was never going to happen to saying, all right, I'm going to make it happen. Um, and if, and if, if our old co-host Brian Campbell was on here, that he would be jumping in this conspiracy theory full blown. <laughs> he was a conspiracy theory uh, subscriber. He'd be saying that 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 this is all just talk. It's still talk to keep the UFC and Conor McGregor in the headlines when the UFC knows that at any point they can just drop these little these little subtle hurdles that will make the fight impossible. Because we've been saying all along that, that these negotiations, as well as they're going, or as well as everybody's telling us that they are going, they could they could derail very quickly with the egos involved and the amount of money involved and, and all of the different little hoops that would need to get sorted out. Th- this could all fall apart. And so you you do wonder if, if here's a guy from Showtime, and maybe he's just saying this to put his own pressure on the UFC to say, hey, let's get this ball moving a little bit more. But he's suggesting perhaps that the UFC is not as motivated as they say to make this fight. And we've seen the UFC almost take a, a similar tactic with this with UFC 200. Just, just wait out McGregor. He's the fighter. He's going to want to fight. And he's going to want paydays. So you can always just freeze him out. You can always just wait. And and with the with with the the real uh, confidence that he's going to come back and he's going to take a fight at some point. So it's an interesting conspiracy theory. It really is that, that perhaps the UFC doesn't want this fight to happen. They're just saying that they do, and they're just going to wait it out. And and eventually, Conor McGregor is going to hit that tipping point where he's like, "All right, this fight's not happening. Give me a UFC title defense." It's interesting. Headline number four, uh, not a big one. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but Dominic Cruz. Um, you know, hasn't fought since UFC 207. He lost the, the title to Cody Garbrandt. It's been a great fight. Dominic Cruz, best band and weight in the history of the sport to this point. He says he's he's ready to take on the winner of TJ Dillashaw versus Dominic Cruz. And I'm wondering, Sandu, if you have any problem with that. You know, Cruz is a guy who who told TJ Dillashaw after their very close fight um, in Boston, the very close title fight, you got to go out and and win some more fights. You got to get back in line. You got to you got to re earn a title shot. He's saying that he doesn't necessarily need to do that. You know, Rafael Sunsau wanted to fight him. He said, nope, I'm sitting out. I want I want a title shot. I want the winner of TJ Dillashaw versus uh, Cody Garbrandt. Does he have the right to do that in your mind? Are you okay with him doing that? I'm absolutely 100% okay with that. Like you said, uh, he is the best bantamweight of all time. Um, I think having this time off just to kind of you know, work on some of the things um, that he wasn't able to uh, deploy in his fight with Cody Garbrandt um, is good for him. The fact that he's been building up both Cody and TJ during his time off and his gig with uh, with FS1 is great. He's doing all he's doing and saying all the right things to help promote that fight from a distance from his vantage point. And um, you know he's got that um, you know close link with both fighters. You know if if he gets the rematch with Cody, if Cody beats TJ, then there's that rivalry. Uh, with Team Alpha Male there, plus the the you know the rematch um, storyline on the table, and with TJ Dillashaw, you know he's you know already got a win over him. So if TJ becomes a champion, then you know that's the one guy as champion TJ lost to. So there's a great storyline and a great angle there. And to be honest with you, this will just give us I think enough time for the mid to top end of that top ten to do enough, say enough, win enough, to start building their profile high enough to warrant a title shot, which would be promotable by the UFC as well. Yeah, I don't disagree with you. And like I said, I don't want to spend too much time on this because I don't have too much to add to that, except for, I just want to see Dominic Cruz fight, man. I mean, we didn't really get to see him fight for years because of all the injuries. Now, who knows? You know, maybe he's saying that as uh, as, a... a a cover for you know i do have a little bit of stuff going on you know i I needed some time off i needed to heal up some things and if that's the case fine but if he was if he's just sitting out 100 percent healthy i guess just as a fan of his i don't like that because i want to see the guy fight you know i I already feel robbed i guess of of certain dominic cruz fights but everything you've said about the division holds absolutely true there's no one there's no one really else as as dynamic and fantastic as this division is, and I think it's got a lot of young blood, I think it's got a lot of talent, I think it's got a lot of compelling matchups there that will produce number one contenders. 
That hasn't happened yet. Um, after this fight between Dillashaw and Garbrandt, you look up and down that list, and and a Sun Sal, as good as he is, Lineker, as good as he is, you know, Dodson, as good as he is, um, you know, t- guys like Thomas Almeida, Aljamain Sterling, young guys, um, Marlon Moraes coming in from the World Series of Fighting. You've got all of this going on, but you don't have that one guy that's sitting there saying that he's definitely next. So just based on the circumstances, I don't mind Cruz doing this, but I hope we get to see him fight a couple times this year. You know, but it's, it's kind of looking like we're going to get to see Dominic Cruz just once in 2017, which I think is a little bit of a shame just because of, you know, how inactive he's been over the years. All right. 